Hello everybody, we've got our map created, our players added, and some tokens on a scene that can look around, but there's a problem. They can see everything on the map. Let's fix that now by going over how to add walls, the different types and what they do, and a few things that will make walling your maps easier. Let's get started. First off, we need to go to the left hand side of the screen and change to the wall tool, which is the one with the fancy columns. This is where all the tools we'll be using in this video are located. The draw walls tool is highlighted and if we click and drag anywhere, we can place our first wall. We could keep doing this, but most of the time you'll want to place a number of walls that are all connected to each other. To do that, press and hold control or command on a Mac and drag to start your first line. Then it's as simple as clicking where you want each new point to be and releasing control or command if you're on a Mac, before your last click to end the wall. If you want to reposition part of a wall, all you have to do is click on its vertex and drag it to where you want it to be. These simple walls block vision and movement, but sometimes you want players to be able to see through a wall, but not move through it like with a window. That's where the window tool comes in. Somewhat confusingly, it's an eye with a line through it, which you would think might mean you can't see through it, but that is not the case. If we change over to the window tool and drag out segments for the windows and move our token to them, we'll see that we can see through the window but not move through it just as expected. What if you want your players to be able to move through a wall but not see through it, like some kind of secret entrance or magical wall? That's where ethereal walls come in. You can make them with this mask icon over here. With it selected, we can mark off this area with ethereal walls, and then when we look through it as our token after resetting Fog of War, we can't see through the walls, but if we try to move through them, it's like platform nine and three quarters, and we're on the other side. Being able to move through walls is great, uh, is great and all, but most of the time people try to do that with doors, and Foundry has your back here too. If we change over to the door icon, it will unsurprisingly let us add doors to our scene. I'll mark a door right here, and when we check it out with our token, we'll see this door icon, which we can click on, and it will open and allow our token to move through. If, as the DM, you want to prevent your players from opening a door, you can right-click on it to lock it. Then, when a player tries to open the door, they'll hear a rattling sound, and you can smugly tell them that the door is, in fact, locked. If locked doors aren't enough for you and you want to have hidden doors, there's a tool for that as well. The little incognito icon here represents the secret door tool. With it selected, we can draw out a secret door, and when we check it out as our token, it looks just like a normal wall, which you can tell your players about if they manage to find it with an investigation check or by some other means. There's one last type of wall uh, that we haven't covered, and it's terrain walls, which are represented by this mountain icon. Terrain walls are great because they let you see what's within the walls, but not what's beyond them. That's a little bit hard to understand, so let's take a look at an example. I'm just going to put terrain walls around this part of the map, and then bring our token over here to look at it. We can see the object, but not past it. This is great for a lot of environmental features like stones, columns, buildings, and helps make your maps look better by letting your players actually see them. Here's where it gets a little crazy. What if you want some combination of all of those things? Or if you want one-way walls that you can see out of but not into, or to block movement one way but not another? You can do all of that too. You can click on any wall segment to open its configuration menu. Uh, here you can set movement restrictions to be on or off with the movement restriction setting. Uh, you can set perception restrictions to none for a window, normal for a wall, or limited for a terrain wall. Then you can set the wall direction, which is a funny way of saying in what direction should those restrictions apply. Whether that's both to the left or to the right, then there's the also funnily named is door setting, which can be set to none for not a door, door if it is a door, or secret if it is a secret door. If it is a door, you can also set its door state to closed, open, or locked. Now, that's a lot of super cool wall facts, and I'm sure you're dying for more. I've got a few more bits of information to share that will hopefully be useful. First is this tool up here, which lets you select walls. You can click and drag to highlight a bunch of walls and then move them or double click on one of their vertices and change all of their settings to whatever you choose at once. Second is this clone icon down here, 
when you have it selected, uh, whatever the last wall configuration you set up was, it will keep making more of it. So if you make a wall that is limited perception in one direction and is also for some reason a door, you can change the uh, you can change this tool and draw out a whole bunch more walls with that same configuration. Thirdly, we've got this plus icon here that is a translucent purple. If we click it, it will toggle on and make it so that our wall snap to the grid. As you can see, even if I start here in the center, it will bring my wall to the closest part of the grid that it lines up to. Finally, we've got the trash can, which will take all of our well-placed walls and delete them. If you accidentally hit this key, there is a lifeline though. You can press Control Z to undo it, and it should bring your walls back so long as you haven't done something else beforehand. That's all of the basics for walls and token line of sight. Next up, we're going to take a look at lighting, which is going to go through all of the great new lighting features that we got in the 0.7 uh, releases of Foundry. And I will see you in the next one.